Hello and welcome to the Warcraft Academy guide to playing a survival hunter in patch 5.4. This guide is going to cover the basics of the rotation as well as some more advanced tips and later talk about stats and character customization. We're going to be focused primarily on doing as much damage as possible. You can use the menu at the top of the screen to skip between sections of the guide as you see fit. You can also find a written counterpart to this guide on Evrelia.com, as well as a forum to ask all the questions about it that you might have. First of all, let's quickly run over how the rotation works and what each of your spells do. As a hunter, you have a unique resource called Focus. This acts in a similar manner to other resources, in that some abilities consume it, and other abilities generate it. It also regenerates automatically over time, and this increases with haste. Managing your focus properly is important in mastering your hunter. Cobra Shot and Arcane Shot are both filler spells. Arcane Shot is an instant cast, does arcane damage and consumes 30 focus. Cobra Shot has a 2 second cast, generates 14 focused when used, and can be cast whilst moving. Serpent Sting is a damage over time ability. Once it's been applied it will automatically be refreshed every time you cast Cobra Shot. It does instant damage when applied, and then additional damage over time. It also generates focus every time it deals damage. Explosive Shot is your most important and highest priority ability. It does high damage over 2 seconds and applies Hunter's Mark to the target. Hunter's Mark is a debuff that increases the range damage of attacks against that target by 5%. You can apply this manually using the Hunter's Mark ability, or have it automatically applied by Explosive Shot. Kill Shot is an ability that can only be used on targets that have 20% or less health. It does very high damage and if it fails to kill the target, the cooldown is reset. This can occur every 6 seconds, and it normally has a cooldown of 10 seconds. Black Arrow is an ability with a 24 second cooldown which does damage over 20 seconds, and every time it deals damage it has a 20% chance to give you a lock and load proc. This lock and load effect is a buff that causes your next two explosive shots to cost no focus and have no cooldown. You'll also get a guaranteed lock and load proc every time your freezing trap or ice traps activate successfully. Lock and load can only proc once every 10 seconds. Further, a murder of crows and glaive toss are all talents that are part of your single target rotation. Further instantly restores 50 focus and regenerates an additional 50 focus over 10 seconds. A Murder of Crows summons a flock of crows to attack the target for 30 seconds. It has a 3 minute cooldown by default, although this is reduced by 1 minute if used on a target below 20% health. Glaive Toss throws a glaive towards the target, dealing damage to each enemy struck along the way towards the target and on the way back to you. It slows targets that it hits. Other than these abilities, you have 3 major cooldowns. Rapid Fire increases your ranged haste by 40% for 15 seconds on a 3 minute cooldown. Stampede summons your entire stable of pets to attack your target. This is a high damage ability and should be used as often as possible throughout the encounter, whilst trying to overlap it with external haste buffs and your agility potions. Rabid increases your pet's attack speed by 70% for 20 seconds. This will be on autocast by default, but you'll want to turn it off autocast and use it manually for optimal use. For multi-targets you have a few other abilities. Multi-shot is your main AoE ability. This does damage to all targets within 8 yards of your initial target and applies Serpent Sting to each target hit. Barrage is a talent that you'll take instead of Glaive Toss on fights with multiple targets. Barrage automatically turns you to face your target and fires shots at everything in a 40 yard arc in front of you for 3 seconds, doing heavy AoE damage. Finally, you have a group of self buffs called Aspects. You should always have one of these active. Aspect of the Hawk increases ranged attack power by 25%, and also reduces damage taken by 10% if you have it glyphed. Generally, you should have this buff active at all times unless you specifically need one of the others. Aspect of the Cheetah increases your movement speed by 30%, but you become dazed when struck. This can be useful when paired with the glyph if you need the increased movement speed. Aspect of the Pack is similar to Aspect of the Cheetah, but it affects everyone within 40 yards of you. This should be used with extreme caution unless you want your fellow raiders to be very angry at you when they're dazed. So now that we've gone over how each of your spells work, let's talk about how to apply them in your rotation. Your first priority is to ensure that Hunter's Mark is applied to the target. Usually you'll apply this once to a target before the fight begins, and from then on it'll be automatically refreshed with your explosive shot. You can only have one Hunter's Mark up at once. If there are multiple Hunters in the raid, it can be beneficial to keep Hunter's Mark up on different targets so that you each benefit from increased AoE damage. You should be using Explosive Shot on cooldown. 
Every time you get a lock and load proc, you should spam cast Explosive Shot until you can't cast it anymore. When you have the tier 16 4 set bonus, occasionally your lock and load procs will not be consumed. This simply means that you can do extra explosive shots before the buff falls off. You can safely explosive shot as many times in a row as you want. The damage over time is additive, so none of the damage will be wasted. When the enemy is below 20% health, kill shot is next on your list and should also be used as often as possible. Remember that kill shot's cooldown will reset if it fails to kill its targets, so you can effectively use it twice in a row each time before triggering its cooldown. Next, black arrow should be used on cooldown. Now, Black Arrow is a 20 second debuff with a 24 second cooldown. However, when you get the Assurance of Consequence trinket, the cooldown may be shorter than the debuff. When this happens, you'll need to wait until just before the final tick of the existing debuff before you cast it again, because you want to maximise the number of ticks you get without losing any uptime. Alternatively, you can just cast it on another target as soon as it's available, provided that the target will live for its full duration. If you're using a Murder of Crows, use it on cooldown next. You should only use this talent on enemies that will live for its full duration. Next, make sure Serpent Sting is applied to the target. From here on, it will automatically be refreshed by Cobra Shot. When you have the tier 16 4 set bonus, you may find that you're casting so many explosive shots that your Serpent Sting falls off before you can Cobra Shot. If this happens, you'll need to manually reapply your Serpent Sting. Glaive Toss should be used on cooldown if you're using it. If possible, try to position yourself so that Glaive Toss will hit multiple targets on the way to its final target, so that it does extra damage. Other than that, you can use Arcane Shot and Cobra Shot to control the amount of focus you have. Arcane Shot should be used to dump any excess focus you may have, in order to prevent yourself from capping. You never want to reach maximum focus, otherwise you're essentially wasting DPS. Likewise, you can use Cobra Shot to generate focus when you need it, particularly if you lack focus to execute a more important ability. This is where forward planning comes in. As a hunter, it's extremely important to ensure that you have focus for your higher priority abilities, so that you can use them instantly as they become available. For example, your talent Fervor is very useful for survival, because you can use it in conjunction with a murder of crows. It's best used by draining your focus just below 30, just before a murder of crows comes off cooldown. Immediately use Fervor, which will give you enough focus to use a Murder of Crows, which will then drain the focus back down so that none of it is wasted. When a Murder of Crows is on cooldown, you can use Fervor as soon as it becomes available, but taking care that none of the focus it provides will be wasted. You'll find that your focus will bounce up and down wildly throughout your standard priority. This is particularly true when you obtain the tier 16 4 set bonus which gives your lock and load procs a chance to not be consumed. You should try to learn which abilities consume the most and least focus so that you can anticipate how much you'll need in the next few seconds. Outside of your primary rotation, you also have to factor your cooldowns in. Rapid Fire is off the global cooldown and should generally be used immediately as it becomes available. However, the main goal is to use it as often as possible throughout the encounter. This means you can delay it slightly, such as to line up with a period of AoE or other buffs, as long as you use it as many times as possible. Rabid has synergy with your personal agility buffs, your potion, heroism, and other external damage increasing effects. Due to this, you'll want to manually use your pet's Rabid ability manually throughout the fight, but also ensuring that you use it as many times as possible throughout the encounter. Stampede should also be used on cooldown. Due to its long cooldown, you can usually only use it twice in each fight anyway, so it's best used once in the opener, and then again as many times as possible during the encounter. You can save it for important periods of burst damage, if necessary, and it's also good to use it during a late heroism if possible, or during trinket procs and your second vermin's bite potion. Once you have the Assurance of Consequence trinket, its cooldown will be reduced enough so that you can use it more often. Against two or more enemies, maintain your single target rotation, but use Barrage instead of Glaive Toss, and use Thrill of the Hunt instead of Fervor. Use Multi-Shot to apply Serpent Sting on all targets, provided that they're close enough to AoE. Try to do this using a Thrill of the Hunt proc whenever possible to reduce the cost. Explosive Trap can also be used on cooldown, providing that at least two targets will be inside the effect for the full duration of the trap. If you're using the Assurance of Consequence trinket, you should alternate your Black Arrow on different targets. This is because the cooldown of Black Arrow will be lower than the duration of the dot, so you'll need to switch to a different target if you want to use it as soon as it becomes available. Against four or more targets, make sure that you're using Barrage and Thrill of the Hunt. Use Multi-Shot to apply Serpent Sting to all targets, then use Barrage on cooldown. 
use kill shot on any target that's below 20% health, and after that use a multi shot as your main focus dump and use cobra shot to regenerate focus. Like above, explosive trap can also be used as long as the targets will remain alive for the full duration of the trap. You can also pre-place the explosive trap before the AoE starts for an increase. Now in addition to these situations we need to quickly cover ice trap and freezing trap. When either of these traps successfully snare their target, you get a guaranteed lock and load proc. It's a gain to do this to get the guaranteed procs even for single target, but bosses are immune to the traps and so won't give you a proc. This means you can only do it when there are snareable adds in the encounter. So whenever there are snareable adds, throw down an ice trap to get a guaranteed lock and load proc which will give you a DPS gain. However, lock and load has a 10 second internal cooldown, so if the trap activates whilst it's still on cooldown, you won't get the proc. Therefore you need to use an add-on such as tell me when to track the cooldown of lock and load so that you know when you can safely use ice trap to get a proc as quickly as possible. So with all that information in mind, here's how to open up in an encounter. Apply a hunter's mark before the fight starts, and if possible place an explosive trap on the position the boss will be tanked. Don't place it directly under the boss where he is before the pull or the trap will trigger a ninja pull. Now precast a cobra shot time to land as soon as the boss is pulled and send in your pet. Use stampede and rabbit as soon as the boss is pulled and then explosive shot immediately after. Apply a black arrow and use rapid fire to help your focus regenerate faster. Use further and then a murder of crows and after that use glaive toss and finally apply serpent sting. From here simply follow your standard priority list. Pets are an extremely important part of playing a hunter. Each pet provides a separate raid buff and so the raid composition should be taken into account when deciding which would be the best pet to use. Try to pick a pet that provides a buff your raid would otherwise be without. On screen you can find the best selection of pets to have available in your stable. This is not an exhaustive list of pets available, simply a selection of the ones that provide the most commonly missing buffs. Your pet should always be stacked for ferocity unless an encounter requires your pet to tank a hard hitting mob. So onto your character development choices. Your first priority is agility and then hit and expertise each up to their respective caps of 7.5%. After that you should go for crit, then mastery and then haste. Once you obtain the legendary metagem, haste will gain some value for single target and be slightly better than mastery, however in any fight that involves multiple targets mastery is a much better choice. Given the nature of most encounters, you'll generally want to follow the listed priority above. With that in mind, these are the best gems and enchants to choose from. Glyphs are largely situational choices, but there are a couple that would be useful in more situations than others. Glyph of Animal Bond increases all healing done to you and your pet. This increases survivability and should always be used. Glyph of Deterrence increases the damage reduction granted by deterrence. Again, this increases survivability and should therefore always be used. Glyph of Disengage is your third go-to glyph. This increases the distance you travel when you disengage, effectively increasing your mobility. Glyph of Ice Trap increases the range of the Ice Trap, making it easier to place correctly. This is useful for slowing the mines on Siegecraft and Blackfuse. Glyph of Solace is useful for Paragons of the Klaxi if you need to crowd control the Parasites to prevent the effects from being broken. Glyph of Aspect of the Cheetah is useful to prevent yourself from getting dazed when using Aspect of the Cheetah. This is not an exhaustive list of glyphs, just a selection of the most useful ones for Siege of Ogrimmar. Next, your talent choices. Now each tier may have talents that are more useful in specific situations, whereas some may have one mandatory talent. In the first tier, your default choice should be Crouching Tiger Hidden Chimera. This increases your mobility by reducing the cooldown of Disengage, and increases your survivability by reducing the cooldown of deterrence. Post haste is better for fights where you need increased movement speed in short bursts, such as the intermission phase on Immersius or the downdraft on Jikun. In the second tier, binding shot should be your default choice. When used correctly it is an on-demand AoE stun, which is highly effective and more useful than either of the other talents in this tier. In the third tier, Aspect of the Hawk adds 10% damage reduction to Aspect of the Hawk. This will generally outweigh the other two choices in almost all circumstances. Spirit Bond can be useful if you spend long periods out of range of healers, such as on the conveyor belt on Siegecraft or Blackfuse. In the fourth tier, you generally want to use Fervor for any encounter that is primarily single target. This gives you an instant focus boost and additional focus over the next 10 seconds. This works very well alongside a murder of crows as detailed in the rotation section. 
For AoE encounters though, Thrill of the Hunt is very strong and should be used instead, particularly for encounters such as Galacris. In the 5th tier, you'll choose between Blink Strikes and a Murder of Crows. A Murder of Crows is the best talent to take for primarily single target encounters, or any encounter where your pet will not have to switch targets often. Blink Strikes is more useful in situations where your pet may have to frequently switch targets, or where targets are dying too quickly for a Murder of Crows to last its full duration. In tier 6, you'll choose between Glaive Toss or Barrage. Glaive Toss is best for single target encounters. It also slows targets it hits, and can be lined up to hit multiple targets in its path. Barrage is better for any form of multi-target or AoE encounter. Finally, your gear decisions. You should select gear based on it having as much agility as you possibly can, whilst pursuing your standard stat priority. Now, the best gear to use depends on whether the encounter is single target or multi-target. Generally, most encounters involve more than one target, which means you'll be prioritising crit and mastery over haste, hence the gear decisions on screen. However, you can find a full best in slot list for both priorities on our website. Try to obtain the 4 set tier bonus, and use the leggings of unabashed anger as your off-piece item if possible. For trinkets, Assurance of Consequence and Harem's Talisman are the ones you should be using. Thanks very much for watching this guide. If you have any comments or suggestions, post them below or email us. And if you're interested in being coached by a top hunter, click on screen for more information.